So there's a video that I found on YouTube of a black guy and a white guy with an open carry of an AR-15 and how they are dealt with by law enforcement differently. There are a lot of videos like this on YouTube that are aimed at highlighting that systemic racism is obvious and, um, and right in front of us. And you can do experiments like this that are kind of like pseudo social science experiments. So I picked one and I'm going to break it down and talk about how valid is this when it comes to um, discussing systemic racism and also highlight some of the pushback and problems with videos like this. So here we go. What's up guys, SKS14 here. We're here with Warren. Hey Warren, what are we doing today? Just go out and exercise a rifle with a rifle today. Right on, want to tell them a little bit about your, uh, your YouTube page? Just for educational purpose and also find professional, respectful and constitutional officers in the state of Oregon and make sure we still keep our rights here pure and simple. Okay, so a white guy talking about constitutional rights. The 14th Amendment means all rights applied to all citizens. Essentially, that equal protection under the law so that the law is applied equally across the board. And when it's not applied equally, that could be systemic, right? So that is the concept, is that you treat people equally under the law. So here is the uh, white guy walking with his AR. Upstairs, I'm audio recording. Audio recording. I'm audio oh, recording audio as well. Recording. Yes, okay. sir. How are you doing, sir? Hey. Howdy. Can I see your IDs? No, sir. No, no. Why not? Because I don't have to. I'm not doing the crime. Okay. Any particular reason why you're carrying the AR, especially around this point? I'm just time? exercising my right. I understand that, but is there a reason why you're doing it? I just want to walk around. Oh, Okay, so uh, in that, he says, can I see your ID? He says no, because this is in Oregon, which is an open carry uh, a state. So you can legally carry around a rifle, including um, what's considered like an assault rifle, semi-automatic rifle. And the police officer walks up, uh, is polite, asks for ID. The guy says no. He says, why are you carrying a rifle? He just said to exercise my constitutional right. And the officer is just like, yeah, but why? He's like, well, it's just because of my right. And they're having a conversation like to um, civil adults. Now, this guy, <laughs> this guy is brave. I mean, for a YouTube video, talk about like, like risking your life for YouTube. Um, this is the, it says test two, black guy with AR-15, the same gum, same laws, but he's black. Uh, this is him walking down the street, brave, and let's see how this goes. So there's the police car. He's still walking. Pulled out the gun. He's getting down. Gun drawn. The gu he's just walking up and carrying. He's down on his belly. The officer still has the gun on him. Cobb saying he has a reason to ball this. So she is being yelled at, being told to get down even though she's pregnant. He's pointing the gun at her for recording. They let the officer know that they're recording audio and video. How scary is this though, right? Oh. 
So I don't know if you can hear it, but he's um, the gentleman here on the ground. He is saying things along the lines of the court cases that allows him to carry um, open and things along those lines just to and, and letting the officer know that he's recording just to let him know like that what what he's doing is lawful, legal, um, also probably letting him know that he knows the law because part of this is people are taken advantage of that don't know what they're talking about. It's kind of like going to the mechanic and be like, my car is making a noise. I don't know what's under the hood. The mechanic's like, ah, well, you're, you know, whatever. Your sniggle flues is, is all messed up. And then, oh, like, oh, I guess I got to buy new sniggle flues. Um, so when you let the officer know that you know what you're talking about, that is a way to kind of protect yourself that you can't just take advantage of me because I will fight this in court. It's a way to, uh, a protective measure right now uh, that uh, this guy on the ground, the black guy is, is trying to communicate. Okay, probably also because he's scared, rightfully so. I mean, there's a gun drawn on you. You know, that's pretty scary. Starting again. Gun is still pointed. The officer is not moving. It's almost like a. Officer is still not budging. He's asking if his wife is being detained, and the officer is saying yes. So the woman needs to stay still. She's pregnant. She's being detained for recording this social science experiment. I think at this point he's waiting for backup and here comes the backup right now. A second SUV just pulled up. And the guy who's belly down, he's narrating what's going on. Them knowing that they're being recorded is a game changer. Here comes the third unit. He's saying, I do not consent to any searches and seizures. They're taking his weapon. He's saying, I'm not consenting. He did nothing illegal. He's open carrying. They're putting his hands behind his back now. They're putting him in handcuffs. And here's Sirens. He's patting him down. And here comes the fourth unit and fifth unit. So now five units. And it says being black is not a crime. Now, I'll stop it there. Now, one of the, the issues that I think is really important when you look at um, Philandro Castile is one example, too. He said, you know, I have a gun in my uh, glove box. Is the gun laws in America actually were started because Bobby Seale and Huey Newton said this is a way to fight back against corrupt police is you carry a gun. I mean, essentially, the Second Amendment, part of that is to fight against a tyrannical government. So the idea, and Ice-T has talked about this, Killer Mike has talked about this, the idea of the black community carrying guns to protect themselves from police officers to get an even playing field is something that is very American. Whether you're for or against, you know, guns and gun laws and things like that, you know, Colin Noir talks about this a lot, is it is fundamental to America, though, is to you use these guns to protect yourself, to even the playing field a little bit between you and the government. But in this video, one of the things that's very interesting is if you go to the comment section, 
there, a lot of the comments are saying things like, this doesn't prove anything. It's a different road, a different time of day, um, different officers, and they're right. Those comments are right. The social science behind this is not great. Now, in social science, you need to have as many variables controlled as you possibly can. Now, where this gets to is actually really interesting. In my opinion, I believe that systemic racism is a thing. I believe that racism does exist in our society. And I also do not see good social science supporting that. So we're in a weird conundrum here where something I believe exists yet is not supported by data. And this is why the people who push back against like the modern anti-racist kind of agenda. So these are not racists. I'm saying these are people who push back against a lot of like the wokeness. People like James Lindsay, Peter Bogosian, Helen Pluckrose, Brett Weinstein, Eric Weinstein, Sam Harris, all of those people. A lot of them are saying that the social sciences are not good. They're just not good. They're not doing rigorous data. And I agree. I don't think it's that racism doesn't exist. I think it does. And it just shows how crappy the social science, the, the um, critical race theory departments are. I think the critical race theory departments are terrible on American college campuses. I think they're doing a terrible job of proving that racism exists. They need to do better. Why is it that YouTubers can make good or decent data points if major universities took their critical race theory courses and conducted experiments, you don't have to do it with a cop, you don't have to put people's lives at risk, but there are ways you can control variables and start to get some quantifiable good data to show that systemic racism exists or that racism exists on many levels of society. But that's not being done. They're taking these massive shortcuts and just going from, I feel this way, it's my lived experience, so you have to accept that, but then it's so easy to defeat that. So what we need to do is we need to have rigorous, quality, solid, good social science to support the concepts of systemic racism. That's the move. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out my other videos. Working our way through this. I really appreciate it. Take care.